Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In Chapter 8, we're going to introduce you to the functional groups of alcohols and their related compounds, ethers, and the thiols, the sulfur-based compounds. Here you can see the general structures for these types of functional groups. Alcohols have a carbon group attached to an OH, or a hydroxyl group. Uh, we've referred to that OH group as a hydroxyl. Um, an alcohol is any molecule that has a characteristic OH group. If both of the bonds to oxygen are attached to carbons, we refer to that as an ether. These compounds tend to be much more inert to reactivity than the alcohols. And related, if you go down one row on the periodic table, sulfur is just below oxygen, and so there is some similarities to thiols and alcohols. So this is a carbon attached to a sulfur attached to a hydrogen. And if you have a, uh, the ether analog of a sulfur compound, it's called a sulfide. A sulfide. In naming alcohols, it's generally assumed that alcohol takes precedent over anything else. Alcohol is part of the parent chain, and along with this comes a lot of common naming as well. So we'll often refer to the one carbon alcohol, or what we uh, would call methanol, that's the IUPAC name, is often referred to as methyl alcohol, the alcohol of methane, or ethyl alcohol, the alcohol of ethane. Um, here you can see cyclopentyl as a group on the alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and tertiary butyl alcohol. By the way, isopropyl alcohol is the common rubbing alcohol. Ethanol or ethyl alcohol is the alcohol that's in beverages. You'll notice also that we classify alcohols according to the degree of alkyl substitution that they're attached to, similar to what we did with alkyl halides. So ethanol, for example, is a primary alcohol, an OH group attached to a primary carbon. A secondary alcohol is an OH group attached to a secondary carbon, and a tertiary alcohol is a carbon that's tertiary, which has an OH group on it. According to the official IUPAC naming rules, the alcohol group is considered a part of the parent molecule. And so what we do is we replace the E ending of the alkane with OL, indicating that there's an alcohol group attached there, such as methanol. So notice OL is part of the name. The E is dropped. Uh, cyclopentane becomes cyclopentanol. Propane 2-ol. It refers to a propanol where the alcohol is attached to the number 2 carbon. Here you can see that the OL group um, takes precedent here as well. So this is carbon number 3, even though we have a methyl substituent closer to the other end. Since the alcohol is part of the parent name, it gets precedent for numbering. So in this case, 5-methylhexane-3-ol would name this molecule. And if we have more than one alcohol, we use di, tri, tetra, etc., and the numbers of where they're at. So this would be hexane 2, 4, di, all. The IUPAC name for benzene rings with alcohols is referred to as a phenol. A phenol is uh, including the alcohol group, so it's a benzene ring with the alcohol group. So if we have that molecule with other substituents on it, for example, a nitro compound, that's referred to as a nitrophenol. And when we get to the chapter on aromatic compounds, we'll talk more about the naming for these types of species. Well, when we consider the properties of alcohols, we need to think about the nature of this OH group. And it's very similar to the OH group of water. As we know, water is a polar molecule. These hydrogens are partially positive, and the oxygen is partially negative. The bonds are polarized towards the oxygen. And it's exactly the same in an alcohol group. As a matter of fact, you can see that there's a dipole moment for the molecule making these polar. And just like in water, the lone pairs on the oxygen, as you can see in the electrostatic map, do have a lot of negative charge character, so they are weakly basic, either in the Bronsted-Lowry sense or in the Lewis basic sense. And the hydrogen, since it's partially positive, is weakly acidic, and it can participate in acid and base reactions, just like water can. Also similar to water, the hydrogens can undergo hydrogen bonding from one acidic hydrogen to the lone pair of a, a basic oxygen group. And so these bonds are not full covalent bonds. They are just attractive forces that amount to about 5 kilocalories per mole, which is much weaker than a full covalent bond. But it is stronger than many other attractive intermolecular forces. Those could be things like 
electrostatic attractions and um, polar dipole dipole interactions these hydrogen bonds are significant in affecting the properties of molecules for example we see this in water in the boiling point for a molecule that has a mass of only 16 mass units the boiling point of 100 degrees the Celsius is extremely high for such these hydrogen molecule. bonds and that becomes that important in the properties similar to water we do see them uh, soluble in water when there's not a lot of carbon alkyl groups attached so the smaller alcohols for example methanol ethanol and propanol are all completely miscible or completely soluble in water they will tend to mix to make homogeneous solutions once you start to get longer and longer carbon chains, the solubility in water decreases to the point that we get to alcohols which are completely insoluble in water. So the solubility does depend on the amount of alkyl carbon chain that is present. As I mentioned, alcohols are either weakly basic at the oxygens or weakly acidic at the uh, hydrogen that's attached. And we can see, depending on what it's reacting with, those two different properties. So for example, if you're reacting with a hydrogen halide or some strong acid, that lone pair can be protonated to make what we refer to as an oxonium, a positively charged oxygen group. Just like water would be a hydronium with an extra hydrogen and a plus charge. As a matter of fact, the H, just like in water, can be deprotonated, although this equilibrium would not lie towards these charged species. We're going to talk about how acidic these H groups are on the next slide. So the organic carbon part of the molecule does have a little bit of effect on the acidity, depending on whether they're strongly electron donating or electron withdrawing or uh, the solubility, etc. So you can see though the comparisons of the pKa values for various alcohols and compare them to our benchmark here, water. Water has a pKa of about 16 or more specifically 15.74. Um, that's similar to something like Ethanol, this two carbon group, has a pKa of 16. Tertiary butanol, the pKa is a little bit higher. Methanol has a pKa slightly less, so it's just a tiny bit more acidic than water. As you get electron withdrawing groups or the ability to stabilize the negative charge if it reacts as an acid, such as phenol, that can delocalize through resonance, um, the acidities increase dramatically and the pKa's go down. So these, these become stronger acids as you get electron withdrawing groups and the ability to stabilize negative charge on the conjugate base. In general, the acidity of alkyl alcohols are very similar to that of water. Well, as I mentioned, the proton is not very acidic, so we need to have something suitably strong enough to deprotonate it if we want to make the alkoxide or the conjugate base of these acids. One way to do that is to simply react the alcohol with sodium metal. Sodium metal is in the zero oxidation state and it has a, an electron and it will transfer that electron to the hydrogens which will eventually end up as H2 leaving the sodium alkoxide, in this case sodium ethoxide, as the product. Another way to do that could also be using a base like sodium hydride, so that, for example, can react with methanol to make sodium ethoxide. Again, the hydrogens will add up. This is like an H- minus and an H+, plus, and that generates H2 as a byproduct. If your alcohol is more acidic, such as a phenol, one could use something like sodium hydroxide to carry out that acid-base reaction and deprotonate it. That does not react with regular alcohols, however, because the pKa's are very similar. Here, the pKa's are much different, where this phenol is more acidic and a lower pKa.